Welcome everyone to another episode in the series about the tricking library. Today is going to be like a sister episode to the introduction where I just talk about the tech stack. The primary reason for this video is sometime in your software developer career, you're going to have to make a justification for why you're going to use A instead of B. And it's, uh, it's nice to just have an example of being able to justify why would you use a certain technology over the other one? And in certain circumstances, one argument makes more sense than the other one, okay? So it's a very uh, dependent on the situation, on what makes sense at the time, right? So hopefully uh, in this scenario, you will be able to kind of read the situation, what is kind of the priority and uh, how uh, that influences the decision, right? So go ahead and uh, jump into this, right? So uh, first of all, ASP.NET Core, uh, C Sharp. So why do we use this uh, familiarity? I am very familiar with ASP.NET Core C Sharp. I feel like I can build anything using it. Primarily, we're gonna be building an API and uh, the justification for having an API is potentially in the future, I might want to make the uh, API publicly available so anybody can come and query for tricks if they need any. So that's kind of the gist of it, right? And just to quickly talk about some tools that we have available to us and that we are going to use, so, or potentially not. Mediator is a questionable one. I'm gonna see if I can get away without using it because it does I, I add, add complexity, but it is also a very nice library to use, right? So we're gonna see, do we need it? Do we not need it? Eh, we'll take a look at it, right? But we need to go into that CQRS form especially if we're gonna uh, open the, the API to the public, Mediator is gonna help in that regard, okay? So the next thing is Entity Framework Core. It's an object relational mapper. So you have your object in the code, you have a, your data structure, or rather the data representation, and you go boop, 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 right back and forth. You uh, transfer your data from its primitive representation into the code, right? So you're kind of putting the container, right? We know what entity framework is. Why is it good? Why is it a good decision, right? So as you're starting out a new project, entity framework core makes sense because it makes development fast, okay? Uh, and uh, faster is not necessarily better long-term. At some point, if this does grow, to, I don't know, a lot of users, which I don't foresee it, tracking community is not that big. And if queries are, uh, slow queries are gonna start to become a problem, there is a option to then optimize it, right? But at this point, I'm not foreseeing a lot of users. I am not prioritizing quick queries, okay? Uh, next thing is uh, things that I'm just forecasting. So image processing, and we're gonna be using Image Sharp. It's a well-supported cross-platform library for image processing, right? Uh, I don't think I know anything be uh, better. There are a few other ones, but they're primarily for Microsoft itself, okay? And uh, yeah, uh, Xabe FFmpeg, uh, that's again the only video library for video processing I know that kind of uses FFmpeg internally. So that's what we're gonna be using, okay? So moving over to the front end, Nuxt.js, right? So it's a Vue.js framework. It offers server-side rendering, right? So as you imagine, a library for discoverability and, uh, and the search engine optimization it will be kind of important if it's somebody who doesn't know about the website's existence and uh, they would like to find out about some trick they, a trick they might heard and uh, voila, you get a website if you're like Googling for a tutorial and there is a link in the tutorial on there, etc. right? So being able uh, to have the information discoverable by the search engine is actually something I value at, at this point. So Nux.js is something that I'm gonna be using and I'm not gonna be hosting it on the API. It's not gonna be sitting in .NET Core, so there is gonna be a separate Node.js server hosting it, okay? And then again, Nux.js has client-side uh, rendering, so let's move the UI transitions. We'll, we'll see how fancy we can get with it. And last thing, uh, I decided to drop this point on because it's a learning opportunity. Sometimes it is very important to just go ahead and learn something new, something you haven't tried before that still advances your skills. It opens up your mind to how things can be done in a newer way or a different way. So 
ha having a learning opportunity in this sense is quite important. Okay. Database, right? Uh, we're not going for NoSQL because I never used the NoSQL. We're going with PostgreSQL. So it's a relational database. It's open source. It's free. You don't have to pay for licenses. I never used Microsoft. Uh, I never hosted my own Microsoft SQL servers in production. I don't know what the license costs are. I just know they are there. And that uh, that thought is enough uh, to repel me away from that, right? So we're going with PostgreSQL. And uh, by the way, I know that no SQL databases are generally faster. Again, for me, uh, speed is not that big of a priority. For me, a pr priority is productivity and familiarity with the tool so I can actually go and get the job done, right? So it has an F entity framework core provider. We can just bring that in and we can use entity framework as we have been using it all this time. It's just a different database behind it, right? And again, learning opportunity. Have you used PostgreSQL? Have you ever installed it on a computer? Have you tried to create a table on there? Eh, no, no. Eh. How different is it from uh, 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 from uh, Microsoft SQL? Huh? Yeah, I don't know. Let's check it out. So, file storage S3, um, right? Uh, something about file storage that you should know. It's cheap, right? File storage is cheap. Uh, all those bits, bytes, uh, bobs, kilobytes, and uh, megabytes, uh, they come for pennies, right? So we can store as much as we want in there really. And the primary thing that why we're gonna, we're gonna need a file storage separate from our virtual machine that's gonna be hosting the website is to keep the VM stateless. If we need to scrap it, bring it back up, all our videos are still available, okay? And then it's a cloud goodie, right? So what I mean by cloud goodie, it's uh, some kind of attractive technology that people boast about. Uh, you hear about it and then you're like, ah, I wanna use it. I want to be up to date and then yeah it's one of those and uh, because it is kind of it's s3 kind of standardized kind of like http right so if you have an http client you're gonna have that in javascript and java whatever uh, same story here it's s3 you're gonna have a client for multiple different languages uh, you can basically switch from one language to another and this is kind of abstract in that sense and it, it's also because as S3 standard, it's abstract on the cloud. So Google Cloud is going to have it. Uh, Linode has it. Uh, AWS, Azure, you name it. Um, all the uh, modern cloud providers will provide you with S3 storage. Okay, so you have that portability. And again, learning opportunity. Have you used it? No? Well, let's learn it. Uh, version control, Get, GitHub, uh, no contest. Some people say GitLab is good. I never used it. Um, probably could you use it. Yeah, I don't know. I'll probably make a one-off episode where we go and try to do the same through GitLab. But eh, we'll we'll see what Git. Uh, I will see if we will need to make something about GitLab. All right. Um, but yeah, Git GitHub. I think there is no context. Uh, for all open source projects, I feel like it's the hub of that. So if you have an open source project it's on GitHub. I never seen I never I never had to go and open a repository on GitLab is what I'm saying right uh tons of tools right uh get Kraken get the um, multiplethora of tools that I haven't used I just know that they are out there so if you need a version control visual visualization it's out there I'm not even sure if there are other version control systems I'm pretty sure there are I don't think many people use them so GitHub Actions, right? So there's the Azure Pipelines and GitHub Actions. Both of these are Microsoft technologies. So GitHub belongs to Microsoft, okay? So GitHub Actions is newer and uh, therefore in my mind, it's a successor to Azure Pipelines, okay? And it's gonna be the newer thing moving forward. Azure Pipelines reputation earlier on was stained by uh, team foundation services and azure pipelines right now is in a really good spot it's a really nice piece of software to use github actions is just going to be that but more okay so it's good to familiarize it with it earlier on so then you can be productive with it when it's full throttle right 
So, again, learning opportunity, right? Have you used GitHub Actions? Get to know, right? Everything in the description, everything that you need, all the documentations, I'm going to put it there, right? So, uh, pick your documentation, go read through it, slightly familiarize with the technology, right? So, I, I don't, I decided to mention this one because, uh, I don't know, like, it's a, it's a name of a technology, right? And Genex. Have you used IS, right? Have you tried using IS, right? You want a Windows Server? Like spending money? I mean, the, the, these are the questions that will come to mind if you're like, I don't want to use Nginx. Like, do you like being in pain? Because that's what you're going to get, okay? So yeah, Nginx, uh, no contest there. Uh, right, Linode, okay? So there, there are a lot of thrifty cloud providers out there. Linode seems like kind of a attractive one. Okay, there is Hetzner. There is another one. I already forgot about it. Google Cloud is still pretty cheap. AWS, I have no clue. Uh, Azure, I think from what I last remember, like uh, maybe half a year ago, a year ago, it was pretty expensive. But yeah, as the last point says, cloud is cloud. Uh, once you sort of understand the concept that you are going to be spinning up virtual machines, you can take images, uh, you can spin those up uh, elsewhere, you can scale that horizontally, What's vert what is vertical scaling, etc. Load balancing, that stuff. We don't need to go into com like more complicated examples. This will be good enough to give us an introduction to cloud technologies, okay? And it's cheap enough, okay? So... Uh, Linode is hourly, so you can spin up a VM, work on it for the day for however long you can, three, six hours, and then kill it, right? And then not touch it again. And that's going to cost you like 10 pence or whatever, I can't remember. So yeah, it's a very cheap cloud and uh, you don't have monthly con uh, contracts. It's uh, like pay, pay as you go, essentially, okay? Uh, yeah. And last uh, but not least, just some tools that I'm going to be using. Writer ID for C Sharp and uh, Nux development. Uh, Writer has, uh, this is, comes from the IntelliJ platform. They developed stuff like WebStorm where they have, where they already have good JavaScript support. They share the features between their development environments, right? So Writer has a lot of features, very good JavaScript support, very good C Sharp support, very good uh, all support really. And I really enjoy using that ID and it's par part of the environment that you work in, right? So imagine if you had to come into work and you had a crappy keyboard and you had a old screen, old square screen and a crappy mouse, right? You would not be as happy working there as you would be at the same company, but your tools were better, right? So Writer is just one of those things where it just gives me more pleasure to work with it rather than Visual Studio that in can intermittently freeze, which is the most annoying thing, and then VS Code, which is still not as feature rich as I'd like it to be, but it is light and fast, so it's got that going for it. And then Postman, right? So we're gonna be building an API. Uh, I like using Postman. I think there are other alternatives out there like Insomnia. You can use Curl if you want, uh, right? But n not for me, I'm gonna be using Postman. I'm a Postman man, uh, I like Postman, I'm familiar with Postman, so that's what I'm going to be using, right? Notepad++, I don't know if I will need to use it, but opening text files, stuff like that, like that's my go-to, that uh, really, uh, Notepad should not exist on Windows anymore, it just should be replaced by Notepad++, okay? Uh, but that's my opinion, alright? And last but not least, uh, Windows Terminal with a uh, Windows subversion for Linux. I'm just going to be briefly mentioning this from video to video and uh, this is just how you get more familiar with using the bash shell because this is what you're going to be using every time you SSH onto a Linux box in the cloud, right? And being able to traverse, being able to write a bash script, being able to get familiar with certain commands and uh, tra generally just traverse the directory using the bash shell helps you once you do actually get to that Linux box and you're already in a more or less familiar environment and you know what to do, right? And that's the primary benefit of a Windows subversion for Linux and that's the primary reason people generally buy a MacBook, right? 
But yeah, uh, this is it for uh, the rundown of the tech. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you did, and if you are looking forward to the series, leave a like, subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments. If you want to share some of the tools that you use, um, go ahead, share it in the comments as well, right? Maybe you have cloud suggestions. Maybe you have technology suggestions. Leave them in the comments. Maybe you will be the one to sway my direction for once we actually get to implementing something, right? Make sure to leave a justification as well. I'd like to know your argument for why you use a specific tool, all right? But yeah, also don't forget to join the Discord server. Everything you need is going to be in the description. I also stream on Wednesdays and Sundays. You can join that if you like. And hopefully I'll see you in my other episodes.